Okay, so we ended the video here last time with the idea that game theory can help us understand how this self-interested choice does not always result in an efficient or the best outcome. And we can think about this idea in relation to oligopolies, where perhaps the self-interested choice of lowering your price to take the other firm's customers can result in that overall very poor outcome of a price war, which is bad for you and is also bad for everyone else involved. And one of the things that you can write about if your exams end up being about oligopolies is that although we can't be 100% accurate, it is possible to map out the approximate payoffs for a pricing decision situation. Firms can try to predict what would happen for each pricing choice and try to choose the option that gives them the best outcome. You could also map out the matrix for, well, what happens when you choose to collude with the other firms, right? The benefits of this collusion would be something like, how much more money would you earn by illegally fixing the price higher versus some real downsides where if you were caught colluding with the other firms, what would the legal repercussions be? And ideally, if you are a policymaker that wants to prevent collusive oligopolies, you would want to have it that the legal consequences of collusion should outweigh the benefits. So let's say the fine from getting caught from colluding should be larger than the profit firms would have gained from the collusion. Because if the fine is smaller, why not get collude, risk getting caught, because if you get caught, pay the fine and still have those net benefits. So that was a bit about linking game theory with oligopolies. And while I might be wrong, I think this is the level of knowledge you're required to have for IP economics, not much more than this. And sure, it is an interesting topic, but I know if you're an IP student, you have a lot on your plate, so we can't always delve deeper into everything we find interesting. And with that, I'll introduce the last thing you sort of have to know based on the syllabus, which is market concentration ratios, which is like a mathematic tool for determining whether a market is an oligopoly or not. Here, if we calculate, let's say, CR5, so the concentration ratio for 5, what it means is this is the sum of the market share of the five largest firms in the market. Typically, if the CR5, so the sum of the five largest firms market share, is greater than 50%, so greater than half the entire market, we would classify this as an oligopoly. The usual standard would be if five or less firms than that held more than half the market share. Okay, so... That is everything for oligopolies, and in the next video, we are going to introduce our last market structure in this unit, which is monopolistic competition.